Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today I wanted to do a little bit of science. I wanted to actually discover... So, okay, assuming that our planet Earth was made out of planetesimals, as we're pretty sure it was, how many Ultima Thule-like planetesimals would it take to create our planet? In other words, I wanted to actually try to make Earth out of Ultima Thule, s in plural. Like, how many would I need? So for that, I'm going to actually have to go into Universe Sandbox, and create a completely new simulation um, with essentially planetesimals. And we're going to actually first start by colliding two planetesimals to create Ultima Thule. We're going to create Ultima, and then we're going to create Thule, and then we're going to see them colliding. I decided to place the New Horizons mission here for size comparison, but what we're going to do here is start by making those two rocks. So here is the Ultima rock, there is the Thule rock, um, they're relatively similar in size, but they are kind of not the same. This one is about 14 kilometers in diameter, and this one is about 19 kilometers in diameter. And somewhere in there, somewhere here, I think, there it is, is the New Horizons probe. This is how tiny it is in comparison. So now I'm going to actually start the game. And surprisingly, they're actually spinning too fast. I need to slow down the rotation. And now we're going to wait for them to collide with one another. So, because their mass is actually not that great, uh, their total collision speed is going to be relatively low, possibly just a few kilometers per hour. Currently, they're moving toward each other really, really slowly, and this is actually almost real time, and they're basically just kind of slowly pacing toward each other. So, I'm going to have to accelerate time a little bit, just to make this happen sooner rather than later. And uh, here we go. And there's the New Horizons collision, and now, they're going to be colliding with one another. Now the total collision speed right now is about 10 kilometers per hour and this is essentially what would have happened had there been more mass involved or had there been actually other objects. And these two objects, if they collide with each other, cr will create a, a larger planetesimal that's going to be maybe about 20-ish um, to 25 kilometers in diameter. The extra collision didn't really work out as scientifically accurate as I wished it to be, but that's, I guess, better than nothing. Okay, so now that we've created this planetesimal that's about 21 kilometers in diameter in total, this represents the total mass of the material from Ultima Thule. How many of these would I need to collide to actually create something similar to our beautiful but also very large planet Earth? That's how big Earth is in comparison. Now. Before I start doing this, you know, take a guess, how many do you think we'll need? Now an easy way to start this is for me to actually just basically start putting random objects here and having all of them sort of collide with one another, slowly, one by one, piece by piece. Um, and it's actually spinning really, really fast, way faster than it should be spinning. But that's probably because it's getting momentum from all of these other rocks that I'm colliding with it. And so if I keep doing it at this pace, it's actually going to take me quite a while. Um, I've already done the math actually, I, I kind of know the approximate number of rocks that I need. But let's just say that I actually kept doing this for a while. So let's just say I was basically putting one of these rocks into this big large mass that's spinning really fast right now, um, per second. So one Ultima Thule per second. How long do you think it would take me to finish this and to turn this into an actual Earth? So. I guess you have to try to answer two questions. First is, how many Ultima Thule's do I need to create Earth? And then, um, how long would it take me to create this Earth if I were to add one Ultima Thule per second, like I'm doing right now? Um, actually, I'm adding something a little bit larger than Ultima Thule. This object, I believe, is about 25 to 26 kilometers in diameter. Ultima Thule, if you were to combine it and to basically turn it into a spherical object, would only be about 21 to 22 kilometers. So to answer this, and to try to essentially calculate this without really doing this um, in real life, by basically you know saving myself a little bit of time, we're going to do a little bit of math. And uh, by the way, after combining about 100 objects, I get uh, an object that's approximately 61 kilometers in radius, or about 120 kilometers in diameter. Now, if I were to do this continuously and keep adding more and more of these objects, and if I were to do this one per second, 
it would take me approximately 32 years to finish. 32 real life years of me sitting in Universe Sandbox and clicking every single second, adding every single object. That's because I actually need approximately 1 billion Ultima Thule like objects to create our beautiful planet Earth. So in order for us to create this object, I need to actually add 1 billion objects that are similar to this object right here, which is another version of Ultima Thule. And if you were to combine about 100 of them, you would get this rock. And if you were to combine about a billion of them, you would get this beautiful rock. Now, you can kind of see that they're slowly actually colliding with our planet Earth. Um, and we're going to see what happens if Ultima Thule does collide with our planet. But this kind of gives you an idea that to create such a beautiful planet as ours, you actually need close to or actually possibly over billion rocks that are similar to a typical asteroid or um, a planetesimal like Ultima Thule. That's a ridiculous amount of asteroids. That's a ridiculous amount of objects. That also implies that um, to create a planet, you actually need to have several billion very, very large, very energetic collisions. These collisions, when they occur, probably generate a lot more than just energy and just mass. They probably actually are responsible for generating some materials that end up then creating the planet, but also some of the more complex molecules and some of the more complex uh, minerals that uh, are found on our planet. There's actually a lot of things we still don't really know about how planets are generated and how these collisions actually influence the creation of planets. But what we do know is that we are relatively uh, correct in our assumption that planets are made from smaller pieces of rocks because we have now seen several images of so-called protoplanetary disks where potential planets are born and these disks actually do contain a lot of material that's, uh, well, billions and billions of these Ultima Thule-like objects. And on top of that, in 2018, we've even seen the first ever creation of a baby planet, of a really, really early planet that's formed inside of a disk that's similar to uh, what our own solar system had about 4.5 billion years ago. And this particular disk um, and this particular planet essentially show us that our theories of the creation of Earth and other planets is more or less correct. And now that we've discovered Ultima Thule and we're able to take a photo of it, uh, we are almost certain that this is essentially a so-called um, contact binary. It's essentially two planetesimals that collide and then would usually combine with other planetesimals to create uh, larger objects like planets. This particular um, object didn't really get to become a planet. It, as a matter of fact, was a leftover from the creation of a planet, but we don't really know which one. This could have been from one of the planets that already exist and maybe just got kicked out by the gravitational interaction with other objects, or it could have been from a yet undiscovered planet somewhere on the outskirts of our solar system, like for example, the mysterious planet nine that we've been looking for for the past few years. It could also be from an object that no longer is even in our solar system because there's at least one planet we think we lost um, throughout the ages. Or maybe it's from something else that we still haven't really thought about or discovered. But in short, this actually does help us prove the idea of planetary creation from these planetesimals. And because billions of these objects are necessary for the creation of even the smallest planet, this means that, well, generally speaking, what happens in these protoplanetary disks is actually very chaotic, always full of energy, and ends up in billions and billions and billions of miniature collisions that end up creating planets. In other words, without exception, every single planet was born as a result of a tremendous amount of destruction that ended up in this beautiful creation that you see on the screen. And so to answer the question I posed in the beginning of the video, well, it would take about a billion Ultima Thule-like objects to create this beautiful planet. But if I were to add them manually, every second, it would take me about 32 years of my life to actually finish and to create this object. This would be probably the longest video on YouTube if I were to do this manually. I don't think I'm ready to do that just yet. Maybe one day, maybe if I decide to create a channel similar to Mr. Beast, where I actually just do things that are absolutely ridiculous for the longest period of time, but not yet.
Anyway, on that note, uh, I hope you learned something from this video and I hope now you know a little bit more about how planets are generated, how planets are actually created, and most importantly, how many pieces it takes to build a beautiful planet like Earth. In one of the future videos, we'll explore this idea a little bit further, so do subscribe if you still haven't. Also, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and wants to learn through simulations and video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Anyway, space out.